Hi there. Here's my other workshop, not the one in France. This is my small backyard shed workshop. So, it's built first of all on little wooden columns that sit on top of the slabs. You can't see but they go right back. They're different heights to account for a bit of unevenness in the, in the, the surface that it's sitting on. And they are all made of tantalised timber. So they should be rocked and they are, create a very rigid support indeed for a double layer of plywood for the floor. So let's go in through the double door. It's a door that opens wide to get two parts of the door to get things in and out, big things in and out, which is nice. Let's go in and I'll shut the door. You can see that all round it's, um, it's uh, insulated with this sort of uh, thermal board stuff. I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's insulated anyway, and it's fairly warm, the ceiling and everything. It's got nice LED strip lights, which is great. Um, but then, let's look at the at what we've got in here. Well, first of all, just inside the door, we've got this cyclonic dust collecting system. There's the vac at the back, the orange thing, and then the cyclone, um, and so on and so forth. And it's connected up to... Um, all the pipes which are made of clear plastic and they go right around the shop um, right around to the other side and there's I'm not going to count the the number of um, you know ports it's got but there's there's plenty on each side all around the, the shop to, to give suction main reason is because I do work with wood in here as well as metal it's kind of a general purpose workshop another nice touch is this little sweeping box on, on the floor here which is connected up to the dust collection system so you just sweep stuff in there and it gets sucked up and ends up in the in the bin which is nice uh, it's a lot better than messing around with a dustpan so what have we got in the shop here well first of all this beauty is the coronet major it's a wood turning lathe but it's also a kind of multifunctional um, wood machining station really at the moment you can see it's fit, fitted up with uh, the belt sanding attachment um, but there's a number of other attachments here. It's got a, a circular saw, a table saw. It's got a planar thicknesser attachment. Um, it's got various others here. It's got mortising attachment. I'm not going to get all this out, but um, a mortising attachment, um, bowl turning attachment there, and so on and so forth. So it's quite a versatile machine, and you know I've used it quite a bit for for various jobs using different attachments. The belt sanding attachment is very handy indeed for all kinds of things. Drawers here with lots of bits and pieces in them, chucks, uh, bits, you name it. Um, there we go. You get the idea. Faceplate, etc. So, underneath that I've got a, a basic assortment of woodworking tools kind of shoved in randomly. A few pieces of wood and so on. Above it, a small selection of wood turning gouges. I'd like to expand on that um, as I get more into wood turning, which I hope to do in the future. Um, up there, there's a bit of stock, you know, of metal and wood. There's a piece of walnut that came from France there. It looks a bit precarious, but actually it's sitting quite nicely in these two heavy brackets. I'm not too worried about it. Um, here we have sort of uh, welding clamps, brushes, um, and so on and so forth. Um, sort of in, arranged in between and around the, the ducts for the, the dust collection system. Just moving around a bit. Um, a miter saw, a jigsaw, a sort of cabinet here with various things in it, hand drills, router. Uh, underneath we've got various paints and varnishes, lubricants, mainly adhesives, all that kind of stuff in one place. Down on the floor here, in the corner, we've got a little oxyacetylene, um, is it acetylene? No, oxy map portable mini um, brazing and welding kit, which is quite nice for the odd bit of silver soldering and whatnot. Um, here we have a sheet metal bending, forming, shearing uh, machine, the smallest one that you can get, I think, but it's actually quite handy. It works quite well. Up on top again, I forgot to mention the welder. Welding is a skill that I really haven't developed at all and um, uh, it's terrible really. I really need to learn how to weld properly. Um, 
Uh, so it's one of my New Year resolutions for 2018. That and screw cutting. Uh, two things that I really ought to know more about than I do. Um, but that welder's a sort of stick and TIG welder. I'm going to mainly use uh, stick, I think. Up on the shelf there's a welding helmet, gloves, various bits and pieces, grinding bits, uh, drill bits, reamers, which are imperial reamers that came with my Ford ML7 that I bought, pulley, uh, sorry, gear pullers, um, and so on. The rest will come to after. Next round, we've got my beloved Door Westbury uh, mill. Um, this is a very handy machine that's used for quite a few things. I've done quite a bit on this, milling jobs as well as drilling jobs. Um, uh, I restored that and there's another video about the restoration of it um, on my channel here. It's newly mounted. I've, I've repositioned it on a new stand that used to belong to some radial arm saw. Um, but uh, it's got various milling related items there. Um, and on the floor there's some other stuff as well, um, collets and whatnot and boxes. But, um, you know, so everything really to do with the mill here is kind of in one place because it, this is my main mill here in this small workshop. Um, I was thinking of bringing the Centec over from France. It was a hell of a job to get in the van and abandoned ship because if I'm going to do that I'm going to have to do a lot of dismantling and so on. So that may or may not happen now. I'll live with this for a while and see. It's done me good so far. There's a nice little bottle jack there. That's handy when you're raising and lowering the head of this thing. Um, you know, you do use a Tommy bar to, to turn the screw, but there, or the collar around the screw, but you know, sometimes a little extra help is good because not a, not a big mill, but these things are heavy, especially when you're trying to crane in to reach them. Um, okay, here in this little tall bit of IKEA detritus, uh, milling vices, uh, V-block, um, various things to do with milling, drilling, cutting, tail stock for the rotary table, um, uh, hole saws, drill bits, etc. Um, and below that, another little cabinet with sort of small, delicate hand tools in it, mainly polishing gear, um, a dapping set, which I haven't seen a great deal of use, I have to say. I keep telling myself it's going to come in handy. Uh, at some point, I'm sure it will. I have used that a bit. Um, the uh, surface plate with a little marking gauge sitting on it there. Uh, it's quite nice. Um, somebody very kindly gave me that actually. And now on to uh, my main floor standing drill press. The observant will notice that there is no motor on it. I had a catastrophe with the motor. It's basically burnt out. Um, and uh, I'm in the process of changing it over to a three-phase motor with variable speed control which will be really quite nice. It's a pretty standard imported drill press. I'd love a big old cast iron one in here but um, well that might happen yet but you know not, not at the moment. Um, it's a decent drill press um, and you'll see that I've uh, added a, a milling table to it. Um, this is uh, quite handy on a drill press I find just to move things around for drilling but I've also um, and there's another video on my channel about this up here you'll see this which is the remains of a Sieg X1 micro mill you can see it lying on its side there with its pulley on the right and that attaches to the, the drill press and is operated by this flat belt here from the spindle of the drill press if that doesn't sound uh, comprehensible, look at the other video and you'll get the idea. It actually works okay. The belt slips a wee bit, but that's the nature of flat belts. And as long as you get your tensions right, it can do jobs and, uh, you know, for example, boring and um, other milling jobs, cutting with a slit and so on. I've used it for these kind of things. So the drill press is quite versatile and it will be good when it's got the three phase motor on because there'll be some awesomely slow speeds available. Down here is a nice little anvil. It's just a cast iron anvil, nothing special, but it's nice and small and it's right for this shop because it's a very small shed. It's like uh, 12 by 8, I think, something like that, feet. So basically we're talking about a compact space, but it's actually quite well organised and everything's sitting in here quite quite nicely and it does feel like a, a usable environment. You know, there's a bit of floor space in the middle and I'm happy with it. Um, coming on round, bits and pieces for 
um, the uh, dust collection system, odd bits and pieces of this and that. Um, my steampunk friend, keeping the spirit alive. Um, down here we have a sort of cheapo version of a, a Dremel type tool mounted on a Dremel stand and it's got a nice little set up here with a, a rotary table with dividing plates for very small um, pitch circles and such like. Um, inside here just Allen keys, bits and pieces. Uh, that's got a soldering iron and stuff and it doesn't want to open. Various manuals for things. So, okay. Um, now, the lathe. This um, lathe has just had a major overhaul. I won't go into it in great detail because I'm going to make another video about this. But basically, I had motor problems with the lathe as well. It's quite a nice lathe. It's an import machine, but it's nice to use. But without a motor, it wasn't going to be much good. So what I've done is I've fitted a three-phase motor to the lathe with um, this uh, you know, inverter and control pendant thing. Um, and it works really well. Um, I'll just give you a quick look. So it started up and then just using the variable speed control, the speed out of it. You get the idea. Very nice. So my plan is that the motor and the drill will be exactly the same and it'll be con connected to the same inverter, not at the same time, but you can swap them over and um, then, you know, the two, two motors running on one inverter saves me buying another inverter. It's good. What have we got? What else have we got? Lots and lots of spanners, all nicely organised in pairs. A little bit OCD, but it's damn handy when you're looking for the right size of spanner. Other various hand tools, chuck keys, do 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 do, all along this board here. And you'll see there the, 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 the dust collection system's going right round as before. All this up here on this shelf, apart from the, the screwdrivers, is mainly um, lathe related. So all lathe tools and um, this box has got various other attachments for the lathe in it. I won't go into it in great detail. Down here is a great little tool. It's an Evolution Rage chop saw and that slices through steel like nobody's business. Um, I'm very, very pleased with it. It's the smallest one they've got, the smallest one they make, but I'm, I'm actually thinking of buying a, a bigger radial arm version for my workshop in France because you're cutting through several millimetres thick sheet steel there and it just slices through it, no problem at all. I really like it. Um, here, uh, project on the go, um, some stuff that I'm doing for somewhere in the house. Um, this glass bowl has got bits from the Ajax milling machine, they're just due for a clean up, a bit of a, a spruce up um, before they get fitted back onto the, the body of the mill. A magnifying glass, uh, quite a substantial bench grinder with um, a, a, a sharpening rest for Robert Sor made by Robert Sorby for wood turning chisels, which is very nice indeed, but it's also handy for leaning other things on. And there's a what do you call it again? Boron cubic boron nitride. I can't remember what it's called now, but that wheel but it's, it's cost quite a bit, but it's the one that I use most. It's very efficient. Underneath here, more projects. A Drummond lathe in here. Drummond Brothers lathe is hiding in amongst that lot. There's all the the bits for it, which, to be honest, um, has been sitting there for a long time, but it is a future restoration project and will be very nice when it's done. Uh, big cable for the welder, apart from that lots of scrap metal and you know these kind of corners of a workshop where stuff like that gets shoved. Um, I'm sure we all have these in our workshops. This project here is one that I'm going to pick up on again after just fixing the drill which is a mini wood burning stove. I've made quite a lot of progress with it. Um, again I'll do a proper video about it so that you know, we don't need to go into too much detail about it um, in this one. But um, it's going to be nice. Originally it was figured to be maybe a stove for you know, a camper van or something like that, but that's not really realistic with our van. So maybe if we have a little off-grid cabin sometime, somewhere, which is a possibility, I suppose, um, that might be a good 
a good heat source for it. There's my laptop in here. Been terrible connection problems recently. For some reason, it works out better here in this kind of booster than it does in the house. I don't know why. Don't ask me. But um, anyway, there it is. Um, my vice, um, not a particularly you know quality vice, but it's very handy because this whole head rotates like that and th these are pipe jaws at the bottom and the whole thing swivels as well so it's quite a versatile vice sitting right at the co uh, sitting right at the corner of the the bench there the bench is pretty solid I'll put that in shortly after we built the thing um, I quite like to sit out here sometimes of an evening with a beer and looking at people's workshop videos on YouTube um, sometimes it's nice if the living room is being used for other things in the house it's my man cave as well Oh, I hate that expression, man cave, but anyway there, I just used it. Um, what have I got in here? This is my, really, for drawer for measuring equipment. Quite nice new digital calipers that I got for my birthday. Uh, that came to getting caught in the drawer. It shouldn't be in there, though. Um, scrap. I can't throw stuff away. It's a real problem, but there's some nice bits in there. One thing kind and another. And just more kind of scrap and spare you know, pulleys, hand wheels, whatever. Underneath here is a, a gas ring and there's, there's a cast iron pot there as well. I'm going to get a cylinder of propane and connect it to see if I can melt aluminium in it. Um, I don't know if it will get hot enough or not, but I'm going to give it a try. If not, well, I bought a gas ring for nothing. I have to find another use for it, cooking or something. More drills and things like that in there and then underneath more scrap which one day will get used you know so I keep telling myself and so there we are that's a 360 degree tour of this tiny little workshop um, I couldn't zoom out any further on the camera so I'm hoping it's not just been too close up and un incomprehensible but um, anyway there it is I'm just doing a little pan round now just to just to kind of try and compensate for that if that has been the case yeah so thanks for bearing with me here i'll see you later <laughs>